What's up, future respiratory therapists? Hey, in this video, we're going to be looking at a couple of different practice TMC questions. The same question, but absolutely not the same. Let's dive in. Alrighty, so as I stated in this video, we're going to be looking at practice TMC questions. Here's the question that we're looking at. A respiratory therapist is evaluating a patient who is receiving mechanical ventilation in the volume control SIMV mode. The following patient data is, ob is obtained. You have an FiO2 of 40%, a set rate of 12, a total rate of 12, tidal volume 450, a PEEP of 5. Now this is important because we recognize that our total rate is the same as our set rate. This tells you that the patient is not breathing above the set rate, which means this SIMV doesn't mean anything now. Now, what we recognize is when we see the blood gas that is coming along with this patient, we see that we have a pH of 7.27, a CO2 of 55, a PaO2 of 94, bicarb of 25, SaO2 of 97%. This is normal, this is normal, this is normal. The only abnormal values are right here. We have a high CO2 causing an acidotic pH. Now this is important because this is creating an acidotic state. Now, the question is, is which of the following should the therapist recommend? Should we increase PEEP? Well, probably not. PEEP has nothing to do with ventilation. When we're talking about ventilation and trying to fix CO2, PEEP really doesn't come into the formula. So it's not PEEP. And another one here is B is decrease the set rate. Now you may be thinking to yourself right now, oh, I feel like I heard something about rate and, and CO2 and how those work together. And, and so maybe that's the answer. So let's just put a question mark by decrease the set rate. Now the second one, the third option here is increase the set title volume. Well, again, Maybe you heard something about tidal volume and CO2 removal. You probably have. That's probably a good answer. Let's leave it right there for right now. And then the last one here is decrease the FiO2. Now, if you decrease the FiO2, which is 40%, all that's going to do is change the PaO2. But the PaO2 is normal, so we don't need to worry about that. So it's not decrease FiO2. So the question is, is it decrease rate or increase tidal volume? And that's what we're deciding between on this question. And it typically does come down to small details between one or two answers. And so if you chose increase the set title volume, then you are 100% correct for this question. Now, I'm not just going to give you the answer. I'm going to tell you why the answer is the answer. So when we look at this question and they give us this data, we have to ask ourselves, why is increasing the tidal volume the correct answer? Well, here's why it is. Again, it's not increased peak and it's not decreased FiO2. We don't even need to talk about that anymore. What we have to ask ourselves is, what's the difference between decreasing rate or increasing tidal volume? And here's what it comes down to. Everything revolves around minute ventilation. Now, minute ventilation is your respiratory rate times your tidal volume. Now what you need to remember is, is that if we increase minute ventilation, we will get rid of more CO2, which will cause the pH to go back up. If we decrease minute ventilation, then CO2 will go up and pH will go further south or, or more acidotic. So what do we need to do here? We've already identified that this is the problem. So we know that that CO2 is too high for this patient. So we need to get this CO2 down which, so we can help this pH come back up. To get CO2 down, we need to increase minute ventilation. Now, with that being understood, let's go back and look at our options. B is decrease the set rate. Now, if you were thinking rate has something to do with CO2, you're exactly correct but you have to understand in which direction it has something to do with CO2. If we decrease the set rate, which currently is set at 12 and total rate is 12. So again, patient's not breathing over. So we could decrease this rate, what would happen? Well, 
if we decrease the rate from 12 to 10, then minute ventilation, 450 times 10, is going to go down to 4.5 liters. Now remember, normal minute ventilation is 5 to 7 liters per minute. We have just gone down below what a normal minute ventilation is. And so that's a problem. Now, if you're thinking to yourself, well, what, were, what was our minute ventilation before? Well, all we have to do here is go to our calculator and say, okay, well, 12 times 0.45, 12 times 0.45 is 5.4. Now, we agree that 4.5 is less than 5.4. So if you turn the rate down for this patient, CO2 is actually going to go higher, pH is going to go down because we've turned down minute ventilation. So what we need to do is we need to turn up the minute ventilation so that we can get that CO2 down and help get that pH back up. So when we look at tidal volume, which we know already is the correct answer, if we stay on a rate of 12 and we increase this tidal volume from 450, if we just go up to 500, which is going to be 0.5 liters, then our minute ventilation is now 6 liters per minute. 6 liters per minute is greater than 5.4. That will help get that CO2 down, help bring that pH back up. Now, is, is that the minute ventilation we need? Maybe not. Maybe we need uh, even a higher minute ventilation above 6 liters per minute. But the point is, is that this question isn't asking you to normalize it. It's just saying in theory, do you understand how to get CO2 further down and pH up? Because that's the problem. And you may be thinking to yourself, well, how do we even know what tidal volume we need the patient to be on? Well, for look, look at the question. Let's go back and look at the question. A respiratory therapist is evaluating a patient who's receiving mechanical ventilation. Nothing in this scenario told us the size of the patient. Therefore, this question is solely a theory-based question. It's not asking if you understand safe tidal volume ranges for patients. It's just asking, do you know how to increase minute ventilation to decrease CO2 and increase pH? That's all it's asking. That's it. Because why? They didn't give us any patient information. If they would have said a five foot four female, then we would have known the safe ranges to set the tidal volume and the answers would have been completely different because now we would have probably had to have a different option. That's not what it said. So recognize, you have to recognize when you're looking at these questions and, and preparing for this exam, you have to be able to say, they're just asking me, in theory, do I understand what I should do? And in this example, the answer is increased tidal volume because increasing tidal volume will increase minute ventilation, will decrease CO2, and increase pH. That's the message in this question. Now, the likelihood of you getting that question, probably slim to none. What you're more likely to be asked is something like this. A respiratory therapist is evaluating the patient who's receiving mechanical ventilation in the pressure control SIV mode. The following patient data is, is obtained. We've got 40% FIL2, set rate of 12, total rate of 12, and the inspiratory pressure of 15 centimeters of water pressure. Now, we, they didn't give us a tidal volume, did they? No, they didn't. This is gonna be important. This inspiratory pressure right here is very, very important because we recognize we are now in pressure control. So this is the same type of question. It's just, do you understand how to affect minute ventilation in pressure control not just in volume control. Because we see the same blood gas. PaO2 is not the problem, bicarb not a problem, SaO2 not a problem, the problem is this. How do we get CO2 down and pH up in pressure control? That's the question. So, do we increase peak? No. Do we decrease FiO2? No. We also already know that if we decrease the set rate, well that's just gonna further turn down the set minute ventilation. Because if you give less, less breaths, 
at a tidal volume that is being delivered, then your minute ventilation is going to go down. So we know this isn't the answer. So the answer has to be to increase the set pressure. But again, why? Well, the answer is right here. In pressure control, if you increase pressure, you increase volume. And if we give higher tidal volumes at 12 breaths per minute, then we will establish a higher minute ventilation in pressure control, which will help to get rid of CO2 and increase that pH. Now, you don't have to take my word for it. I've got a, a respond ventilator here with me provided by Corvent Medical. Big thank you and shout out to them. Uh, I've also got it on these test lungs and it's already running. And so we recognize here that, uh, first of all, how cool are these test lungs, right? Very, very cool um, bilateral lungs. I mean, this is, this is so cool to have this equipment to be able to teach you with. Uh, so what we recognize here is that we're currently set on a in pressure control, an inspiratory pressure of 15. We have a PEEP of five, we have an eye time of one second, and we have 12 breaths per minute happening. Okay, very cool. So what is our exhale tidal volume? Currently it's coming in at around 515, 516 liters, milliliters. Okay, so this is 500 milliliters for each breath. Now, this is giving us a tidal volume, a minute ventilation around about six and a half liters per minute. Now, what's going to happen when we increase the pressure? Well, oh, let's see. Let's do it. We're going to take this pressure. We're going to increase this from 15 to 20. Now, watch this test lung right here. You should have noticed that that breath got larger, and indeed it did. So when I look at it now, I see that we are getting inspiratory volumes around the 800 tidal volume mark. 800, tidal, 800 milliliters per each breath. That's a tidal volume. Now we do that 12 times, and we're up around 9.6 liters per minute, which is what our ventilator is telling us. Now remember, before we were on 15 centimeters of water pressure, we were getting tidal volumes around 500 mLs. 12 times a minute was giving us a minute ventilation around six liters. We increase it from 15 to 20 centimeters of water pressure in regards to the set inspiratory pressure. And guess what? Tidal volumes went up as well as total minute ventilation. When we increase the minute ventilation from six to nine liters per minute, we are going to get rid of CO2 and this pH is going to go up. Now that's how you answer this question. Based in theory, how do you get rid of more CO2? This is the problem. How do we fix it? Volume control, just increase the tidal volume. Pressure control, you gotta set, increase the set pressure. And that's the summary for this as well. Remember, it all revolves around this, minute ventilation. If we increase minute ventilation, that will decrease CO2. And if we do that, that will increase pH. You can do so by increasing respiratory rate or tidal volume. And in pressure control, you have to do that through adjusting your set inspiratory pressure. Now we can also decrease minute ventilation, which will increase CO2, which will decrease the pH. You have to know your goals. What are we trying to do? Do we need CO2 to go down or do we need CO2 to go up? Tidal volume, respiratory rate, pressure, set inspiratory pressure and pressure control is what's going to take you to that realm. Now, that's minute ventilation, that's pressure control, that's volume control. Those are two practice TMC questions. This is the respond ventilator. This is where you can find me. Instagram at respiratory coach, TikTok at respiratory coach, Twitter, coach RRT. Send me an email to respiratorycoach at gmail.com. You can always send me a text to 817-968-7035. This is my texting platform where I interact with the respiratory therapy community one-on-one -on -one via text. 
just to send out occasional inspirational, motivational, educational content. Do me a favor, if you haven't already done so, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and leave me a comment on this video. Was it helpful? Was it not? I'd love to hear your feedback. And remember, at the end of the day, average is easy. Don't be it.